High-quality assessment requires careful and thoughtful development of items and performance tasks. The most important characteristic of a quality item or task is its ability to elicit evidence from a student that can support decisions about their learning. This module will examine evidence-centered design and describes how it is used to guide the development of the Smarter Balanced Assessment System. To guide the development of high-quality items and tasks, the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium is committed to using evidence-centered design to guide the development of its assessment system. This module will explore several concepts that provide a foundation for evidence-centered design. It will begin with contrasting a traditional approach of developing items and tasks to an evidence-centered approach. It will also present the following concepts. Claims about student learning, assessment targets, evidence of student learning, and task models. This presentation will explore how these concepts are used to design high-quality items and performance tasks. Let's begin by examining a traditional approach to item development and then contrast it with an evidence-centered design approach. Educators have been creating items and tasks for decades using a traditional approach to item development that measures learning outcomes. For state testing programs, desired learning outcomes are often called content standards. Content standards define what students are expected to know and be able to do. When developing a test to measure achievement of content standards using a traditional approach, emphasis is placed on adequately sampling the full range of standards. To sample the standards, a small number of items or tasks were developed to measure a subset of the content standards. One characteristic of a good test was the extent to which the items on the test represented the full range of standards and the extent to which each item appeared to measure a single standard. The primary focus was on the alignment between the content of the item and the content standard. While alignment is important, there is a key weakness in this traditional approach. While the content of an item might be aligned with a content standard, the information elicited by the item may not say anything meaningful about whether or not the student has achieved the standard. As an example, the content of this item appears aligned with a content standard that focuses on addition. The information elicited from the student's response, however, does not say much about a student's ability to add. This happens in part because the item requires the student to describe in words how he or she knows 2 plus 4 is equivalent to 6. In this example, the student may be able to add the two digits, but he or she may have difficulty expressing his or her understanding in writing. Evidence-centered design corrects this shortcoming. While alignment between standards and items or tasks remains important, strong emphasis is also placed on ensuring that each item and task elicits evidence about the target of assessment that can be used to support a claim about students' development of the knowledge, skill, and or ability contained in a content standard. Central to evidence-centered design is the idea of collecting evidence through a student's response to an item or task that supports a claim about the extent to which a student has developed the knowledge, skill, and ability that is contained in a content standard. As an example, let's return to the item that asks students to explain how they know 2 plus 4 equals 6. As shown a few moments ago, this item appears aligned with the content standard because it focuses on addition. However, the evidence elicited by the item may not allow a claim to be made about whether or not the student can actually add. In order to provide appropriate evidence about a student's ability to add, the item must be redesigned. One possible redesign is to simply have the student construct a response that indicates the result of adding two digits. To be clear, an evidence-centered design approach does not suggest that items and tasks should avoid having students explain their reasoning. Rather, an evidence-centered design approach aims to ensure that the information elicited by an item is appropriate for the claim Smarter Balance seeks to make about the achievement of content standards. In this example, the original item would provide, 
appropriate evidence for a content standard that focuses on a student's ability to perform mathematical operations and justify his or her solutions. The revised version elicits appropriate evidence about a student's ability to add. The process of designing items and tasks using an evidence-centered design approach involves six key steps. The first step focuses on clearly defining the content area or domain that is to be measured. For Smarter Balanced, the content areas to be assessed are defined by the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics and the Common Core State Standards for English Language Arts. Once the domains to be measured are defined, the next step is to define the claims that will be made about the domains. A claim is a statement about what a student knows or is able to do. After carefully analyzing the Common Core State Standards and thinking about what students must know and be able to do in order to be prepared for college and career paths, Smarter Balanced has identified four claims specific to English Language Arts and four claims for Mathematics that focus on what students are expected to be able to do at each grade level. Let's take a moment to look at an example of a claim. As an example, one English language arts claim focuses on students' ability to read closely and analytically to comprehend literary and informational texts. The full set of claims are found in the content specifications and will be examined in greater detail in a future module that focuses on these specifications. Once the domain is defined and the claims to be made are defined, the third step is to clearly define the knowledge, skills, and abilities that form the domain. For Smarter Balanced, the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are intended to be measured within each domain are called assessment targets. An assessment target defines the specific knowledge, skill, or ability that students should be able to demonstrate within the domain. The content specifications define a large number of assessment targets that will be measured by the Smarter Balanced Assessment System. As an example, one English language arts assessment target focuses on the analysis of figurative and connotative meanings of words and phrases and the impact of word choice on meaning and tone. Assessment targets were developed by carefully examining the Common Core State Standards and identifying the specific knowledge, skills, and abilities that form the standards. Assessment targets will be examined in greater detail in a separate module that focuses on the content specifications. Once assessment targets are defined, the fourth step focuses on identifying the types of information that need to be collected from students to allow educators to say something meaningful about the student's achievement of the assessment targets. The information Smarter Balanced aims to elicit from students is considered to be evidence that can be used to support or refute a claim about the student's achievement of the assessment target. As an example, for the English Language Arts Grade 11 assessment target we just saw, one type of evidence comes from student responses in which they analyze the figurative and implied meanings of words or phrases and the effects that word choice has on meaning and tone. The evidence required for each assessment target is defined in the item and task specifications. A separate module will explore evidence required to support claims for mathematics and for English language arts. Once types of evidence to collect are known, the next step focuses on describing the characteristics of items and tasks that will elicit that evidence. The characteristics of an item or task are presented as a task model. A task model is a general description of an item or task. A task model can be thought of as a set of instructions that can be used to develop different versions of an item or task. What is important about a task model is that it is designed to collect evidence about the knowledge, skill, or ability that is contained in the standards. A task model is a narrative description of key features of an item or task. Each task model must be designed to elicit a specific piece of evidence about an assessment target through the student's response. From one task model, several items can be created that share key features and allow for eliciting similar evidence but in different ways. As an example, this task model describes a situation in which students are presented with a text passage that is on grade level and are prompted to construct a response through which they identify an example of figurative language, explain the meaning of that language, and describe how the language affects meaning and tone. 
There will be more about task models in modules that focus on specific item types and item specifications. The final step is to develop one or more items based on the task model. A task model might be thought of as a parent from which many items are developed with common characteristics across these items. When applied properly, the use of evidence-centered design to guide item development allows a logical argument to be built about student learning based on information provided through responses to carefully designed items and performance tasks. This argument takes the following form. The student's response to the item or task provides evidence about the assessment target that supports a claim about the student's development of the knowledge, skill, or ability that is at the heart of the standards. Based on this evidence, a statement can be made about whether or not the student has achieved the standards. To review, there are six steps in the evidence-centered design process. Step 1 is defining the domain or identifying what is to be measured. For Smarter Balanced, the domains of interest include the common core state standards for mathematics and English language arts. Step 2 is establishing the claims to be made about the achievement of standards. Step 3 is identifying the assessment targets. These are the knowledge, skills, and abilities that make up the mathematics and English language arts domains. Step 4 is determining the information that will provide evidence that a student has achieved the assessment targets. Step 5 is creating a task model that describes the characteristics of items and tasks that elicit evidence about the achievement of an assessment target. In essence, a task model is a set of instructions on how to build items and tasks. Finally, Step 6 is using the instructions specified in the task model to write items and tasks. Let's take a look at an item to explore how the concept of evidence-centered design informs our thinking about the item. Here is an item that asks students to partition a rectangle into six parts and highlight the equivalent of two-thirds. To evaluate the quality of this item, the first step is to consider whether the item reflects its task model. The task model specifies the following item features. Student is presented with quadrilaterals and is asked to partition the shapes into up to 20 sections and to highlight fractions that represent one half, one or two thirds, one two or three fourths, or one two three or four fifths. Given this task model, it is clear that the item contains the features specified by the model. It is also clear that the task model is designed to produce evidence that the student can create visual representations of fractions that range from one-half to four-fifths. Finally, the evidence is intended to support a claim that a student can explain and apply mathematical concepts and carry out mathematical procedures with fluency to demonstrate an understanding of fractions as numbers. Given the alignment between the claim about the assessment target the evidence required, the task model, and finally the item, it can be said that this item is designed appropriately to collect evidence from students that will support the intended claim. For students who produce a response that accurately partitions the quadrilateral into six parts and highlights four sections, the item provides evidence that supports the claim. For students who produce an inaccurate response, the item provides evidence that supports a claim that the student has not yet developed full understanding of fractions. Evidence-centered design is a powerful tool for informing item development to help ensure that evidence is being collected about the claims made through an assessment. As an item is developed and reviewed, there are a few key questions to ask. First, it is important to understand the assessment target being measured and to recognize the evidence that is to be collected through the item. Second, by examining the task model, it is important to understand the key features that must appear in the item being developed or reviewed. Once the evidence being sought and the features of an item that help create the context in which that evidence can be collected or understood, a new item can be developed or an existing item can be reviewed. Once an item is developed, it is important to revisit whether the resulting item is likely to produce the evidence being elicited.
This is done by reviewing the task model and comparing the key features with the item of interest. If the item is not likely to produce the evidence of interest, then the item is in need of revision. Finally, once it is determined that the item is well suited for eliciting the evidence sought, it is important to ask whether there are any features of an item, like the name of a person, an object, or situation that may be unfamiliar to some students or may otherwise make it difficult to collect accurate evidence from some students. For example, if an essay question asks students to describe what they did during a snow day, any student who has not experienced a snow day may have difficulty answering, thereby making it difficult to collect evidence about his or her ability to write. Any features of an item that may be unfamiliar to some students can create bias and therefore are in need of further revision. If the item is bias-free, it is ready to be shared with others. This module demonstrated that evidence-centered design is a process that helps item writers and reviewers focus on the evidence required to support a claim about an assessment target, and that this information is used as a guide to designing items that are likely to provide this evidence. It also included information about the relationship between standards, claims about assessment targets, evidence, task models, and finally items. There will be more about claims, assessment targets, evidence, and task models in future modules that focus on the mathematics and English language arts item and performance task specifications.